I have officially reached the end of my 40 days. On the 27th, that marks the six week point of my postpartum, early postpartum recovery. And that also happened to be my birthday. So uh, that was such an amazing moment to be able to reflect both on my own birth onto the planet as a baby 32 years ago, as well as to reflect on the closing of this chapter of the early postpartum. So as I've shared over the past couple of weeks, I've gotten a number of great questions. And um, recently more people have been asking, what sort of protocol actually have you been following? Which made me realize I need to be sharing a little bit more about the actual what and how things have gone according to plan, but also according to the realities of postpartum. The thing is, when I was doing research for my book and interviewing countless women, uh, I found that there were kind of five themes of sort, and these are not my unique insights, they're things that I've also researched, um, but these five themes that are cross-cultural in nature. So out of all of the cultures that either acknowledge postpartum, this first kind of six week period or the first 30 to 90 day period, um, out of the cultures that have terminology or um, have set protocols, um, there are there are similarities, which is pretty cool. And when I was planning for the postpartum this time around, I looked at each of those different um, themes and then asked myself what feels right and also what is feasible. So the five themes that postpartum kind of mother-centered cultures around the world um, will incorporate for their protocols include nourishing foods, number one, first and foremost, nutrition is everything. Um, secondly, warmth, um, and that can be both internally as well as externally for the mom. The third is rest which is essential for recovery of any kind. The fourth is community support and recognition or witnessing, either through support of like, bringing food over or taking care of or having a ceremony of sorts around the early postpartum time. And then the fifth is um, loving touch and really bringing healing to the physical body. So. The first postpartum that I had, um, I largely had very little that I needed to prepare because my mother-in-law really took it upon herself to facilitate a traditional Taiwanese 40-day postpartum recovery for me. She took care of just about everything. I looked at night nurses and considered postpartum doulas, but really she managed the household fixings, all the logistics of the postpartum. Uh, and so, that was such a blessing and i also recognize that it's something that's very very unique in the west and not many women have that type of experience so i was excited going into this postpartum and uh to kind of incorporate these different themes but also to really make them my my own and to create a postpartum or to co-create a postpartum with my support team uh that would um, reflect kind of more of a DIY, I'm building this and, and, and creating this experience. So uh, going into this second postpartum, where I'm in a new country, a new continent, have a toddler already, um, I'm at a different point in my business, my husband has now started a new business, so there's a lot of differences. Um, this is kind of how I went about with um, with my team going into each of these themes. So first, with uh, nourishment, um, I asked my mother-in-law to come over to visit us for as long as she would be available, which ended up being about mm, two and a half or three weeks in the early days. She cooked um, just uh, endless amounts of um, warming and really wonderful traditional foods, much like the first postpartum with uh, traditional Chinese medicine ingredients and certain foods that have properties to specifically heal the postpartum body. That was foods with tons of 
um, ginger, good carbohydrates, a lot of different animal organs like liver, um, meat on the bone, um, nothing that was too spicy in nature, very little seafood um, because of the energetic properties in TCM, uh, tons of teas and tons of bone broths, um, and a lot of porridges. And uh, a kind of a staple in the mornings was uh, a dish that had uh, fermented rice wine of sorts called mijo or jonyang um, mixed with uh, cooked with a couple of poached eggs goji berries uh, dragon's eye which are dried uh, longan fruit uh, and i also um, had some spanish inspired or spanish based ingredients too so nothing cold and nothing raw but i did have um, some a couple of cured meats because i'm in spain so jamon is like the best. Um, and I also this time, in addition to my hot water and hot teas, I also did drink coffee every day, almost every day. Yeah. Uh, and that is equally because I wanted it and because I felt like I kind of needed it. <laughs> um, I also found that in this recovery um, period, I did allow myself to have um, more sugar as well as the occasional glass of wine and those things in the first time around just didn't happen so a little bit different um once my mother-in-law left i had i relied on a combination of um soups and stews that i pre-made when i was pregnant and froze as well as um meals that were dropped off by our friends here so generously and my mom also came to visit uh, and so she stayed with us for about a week and she made us some meals um and those were more Western flavors and ingredients, but nevertheless, still very soupy, very brothy, very porridgey, kind of like baby food style stuff, um, which felt really good. I didn't want anything like a salad that just didn't sound good to me. Um, so that's where I kind of focused my nutrition. And I also um, kind of try to find the balance of foods that would be good and nourishing for me with also foods that would be enjoyable for Lila and Warren too. Um, so we found different ways to cook, for example, like the liver, like with rice and peas and onions instead of um, some of the ways that maybe were prepared um, the first time around by my mother-in-law that felt more like medicinal. Um, in terms of rest, I, really have a hard time napping. I just, it, I don't know. I know all the science. I have a whole chapter written on sleep and in my book and I still have active resistance. Napping just doesn't feel good or right to me <laughs> in the body, even though the head knows it's good. Um, so Warren and I kind of strategized in real time. My preparation or my planning was that I would take at least one nap every single day. And the reality was that I didn't do that. Um, but I found that War when Warren, he would schedule to the best of his ability, his morning workout so that I could sleep in um, and make up for sleep that was lost in the night when I was feeding Lucas or taking care of him. And then also once Lila was dropped off at school, taking a nap first thing in the morning before the day got going, um, also giving myself a time limit. So I knew this is just a 30 minutes, this is just a 20 minute kind of thing. Uh, those were strategies that helped me to nap way more than I would have. Uh, and then I also really kind of brought in some of the healing rest activities that aren't exactly sleep, but can contribute to resting. So that was very, very gentle, very gentle yoga, meditation, um, listening to music, eye gazing with Lucas, uh, just really relaxing and not trying to do anything. Um, we have a really comfortable couch here that we picked out specifically because I knew I would be spending a lot of time on the couch. Um, and so I did a lot of resting and to the best of my ability, sleeping during the daytime. Um, but yeah, the naps were a challenge for me. <laughs> I have to admit. And I was also physically, I would say a little bit less active this time. My mother-in-law was very um, strongly adamant that I uh, stay in bed or in the apartment for the first 
couple of weeks and I to to them for the most part I adhere to that I only went out of the apartment when absolutely necessary like to take Lucas to the doctor or um, kind of things like that um, so I did way less kind of walking early on but because my, my I didn't have any birth injuries um, so my body was really asking for gentle yoga so I did more kind of stretching and some pelvic floor rehab stuff that I had learned um, from my, my pelvic floor therapist. So rest was uh, something that I think I feel pretty proud of given, uh, again, like my resistance to the naps. And um, I'm glad I was able to be creative with other rest activities. When it comes to warmth, I was always during this 40-day uh, period wearing socks or slippers, wearing multiple layers, that is obviously easier because it's December and it's a little cooler, although Valencia is not a cold city in the winter time. When I gave birth to Lila and was trying to adhere to the warmth in August in New York, which is super hot, it was very difficult, um, but I made sure to keep um, you know, no, no direct cool air blowing on me. I had different layers of blankets and sheets when I slept. and. Um, anytime, anytime I did leave the house, I was really layered up with the hats or sweaters, jackets, etc., ankles covered, um, so allowed kind of warmth to come in. And then, although it didn't bring maybe physical warmth, um, energetically, I found myself lighting candles a lot in uh, my postpartum in this first 40 days and kind of having more of like a cozy atmosphere feeling, um, which is really nice. <laughs> When it comes to community support, Warren and I did a lot of planning in advance so that we had a whole team ready to go from team members that could help with childcare for Lila if we ever needed it to um, housekeepers that came in and could also help cook meals um, to like patient consultant, pelvic floor therapist, postpartum massage. Like we had a ton of professional support people that we prepared and pre-interviewed or vetted or tried out in advance. And especially living on our own in this home with a toddler who loves to take out toys more than she likes to put them away. It felt so, so helpful. And I felt so grateful that we planned to have um, kind of housekeeping and house care support and we saved for that and budgeted that in our family budget because it really felt so good to have a calm and relatively clean and tidy household that kept me really relaxed and my nervous system at bay. Um, and we also had a lot of friends who showed up in expected and unexpected ways, really. Um, angels who were bringing over food or knew just when to text or call. and. I have an amazing women's circle that I'm a part of, as well as a number of really incredible friends who showed up in big ways for me emotionally. Um, and then just to be kind of witnessed within this community, there's also a group of Valencian moms that, uh, a lot of expat moms that I stayed pretty connected with during this time. And I'm so excited, although it's not happening within the six weeks, I will be very, very shortly um, doing a cl closing of the bones ceremony, which is uh, of the Mexican lineage that my doula Anna has been trained in. And she'll be sharing that with me, uh, which is a way of kind of physically as well as kind of spiritually or energetically uh, completing the early postpartum chapter um, in a beautiful way. And uh, so I feel really thankful. Despite being relatively new to the city, we uh, we built up a support structure really quickly. Um, and that has been just absolutely huge. More than ever before, I am a diehard fan of asking for help and figuring out needs. And uh, it's not a coincidence that there's a whole section in my book dedicated to this. Uh, and then... Finally, uh, when it comes to loving touch, really, which is such a facilitator of oxytocin in the body, the hormone that is the love hormone of bonding, um, I feel really so thankful that I have carved out this window, this period of time where it is bonding and I'm able to cuddle and snuggle Lucas and um, we've been co-sleeping for many nights and um, that's, 
actually just been such a game changer for me and to be able to hold him and then for um, Lila and Warren also to be able to kind of all of us like snuggle and cuddle and that's felt so good. And I also have an amazing massage therapist who does prenatal and postpartum massage that um, again, we've kind of created a, in our family budget um, access to having her come regularly. And that's been incredible as the different breastfeeding aches and pains have come up or as lower back feelings have issues have arose um, as my organs reset um, and just to feel like held and taken care of has been so huge. So those are some of the things that we've done in practice um, that I've uh, both planned for as well as kind of pivoted into based on as things have shown up. And, um, and I feel really, really, really proud and really grateful for finding a balance. And one thing that Warren said to me um, on the on the 27th as this kind of six week period has come to a completion is he really sees how I am a totally kind of different person this time around could be because of the second kid but also it feels more so like there's so much more trust in the in the in the bigger picture around this recovery period and in there's um just a feeling of being more relaxed because I do feel way more prepared um, so I'm really thankful for that <laughs> and to have that feedback, um, has been great. So those are some of the things I've done and, um, I've, if any questions come up or any, you know, more details would be helpful. Please let me know. I, uh, I feel also very thankful that the book publishers agreed to let me experience a second postpartum before my book comes out because I definitely have certain things that I want to update or adjust based on the experience I've had. So with that, I'm complete. <laughs> and uh, for those who followed along this whole journey, thank you. So have a wonderful day.